I felt really shaken by the fact that I was no longer a virgin. I just felt like a part of me was gone. We walked up to the apartment, took off my blazer, took off my shoes. Amara like put her back down. We had a little cuddle, had a little smooch. And then we were like, you don't deserve it. I've only known you a year. Like, Asalaamu As Alaikum guys, what's going on? My name's Sufyan. My name's Amara. We are the exes and today we are going to be speaking about our relationship and intimacy, how we went from zero to a hundred, virginity, <laughs> and things like that. So we've had some comments in some of our videos asking us why we've never like tried food from each other's cultures before, you know Sofian has Pakistani food, <laughs> why we've never travelled to Scotland together before, why we've never done these things before if we've been married and we knew each other before that. Yeah, yeah. If we've been together for so long, how are we doing things for the first time? How is that possible? <laughs> You're a liar! <laughs> the first reason is Covid. <laughs> Second reason is in Islam, you don't really date around and like do too much together and build these like memories together before you get married. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of things that we never did before. So there's a difference between how Muslims would normally get married and how they approach marriage. I guess compared to non-Muslims, it's like totally different. Like those two things are polar opposites. Yeah. <laughs> so what we thought we'd do was kind of break down the main differences between a Muslim approach in marriage and a non-Muslim approach in marriage. Then after that, we'll tell you our story, I guess what it was like going through the process of getting married in comparison to actually being married and being like, I can, I can touch it now. <laughs> You're my husband! <laughs> so the first major difference... Major difference. <laughs> the first major difference... Major difference. <laughs> <laughs> you joke. <laughs> the first major difference is that in Islam, as a general rule, there is no such thing as dating. There is no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend, relationships prior to marriage. People will get to know each other and stuff, but there's no going on dates. Me and Amara going to the cinema by ourselves, watching films. <laughs> Quite eating spaghetti movies. Eating spaghetti in cinema. None of that kissing, bringing Amara home for sleepovers at my mum's house, or me having my own apartment and Amara coming around and we're having sleepovers, waking up all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've got bigger lips than that. Boyfriends, girlfriends, as a general rule, that's not a thing. If you ain't married, you're single. In Islam, if you ain't married, you're single. And he said that to me so much before we got together. Anytime I'd be like, so like, what are we now? Are we like getting to know each other? What are we? Like, well, if you ain't married, you're single. You know what I mean? I was like, rude. Put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Second thing is, you meet parents like pretty early. Like I nearly was so close to meeting his dad on the first day that I ever met Sofian, which like is a bit mad and stuff, even in the Muslim culture. Even though that is a great thing, you just don't expect guys these days to stick to that kind of like concept in Islam of like introducing parents early. But he met my parents very early and I met his parents. <laughs> he met my parents early and I met his parents early. It's not that thing of like, you get to know them for a year and then if they still like you, you meet your parents. I'm looking for marriage. I'm looking for something serious straight off the bat. So if you're somebody that I think that I could, you know, marry, then I want you to know my family. Families are like very involved and very part of what you're marrying. Mm -hmm. I married a good family. I did. Okay, rule number three: there is no sex before marriage. No hanky panky. Remember I said hanky panky. <laughs> <Honky -ponky. Honky -ponky. laughs> <Honky -ponky. laughs> there is no sex before marriage. Not just sex. There is no intimacy. That's no physical intimacy at all. There's no kissing. No touching. No fondling. I touched my own breast. <laughs> I didn't feel like I was gonna grab this imaginary girl's breasts. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a big lady. I used to like them shapely before you. So <laughs> there's no fondling. There's no physical intimacy whatsoever. That is a sin. <laughs> Now obviously it does happen, people do get in relationships, people do cross the line, people do have sex. You will see Muslims saying, oh that's my boyfriend and that's my girlfriend. But as a general rule, that's not a thing in Islam. It's haram, which means not permissible. In loads of other religions as well, there's no sex before marriage, there's no intimacy, no kissing, no squeezing. No pleasing. If you ain't married, you're single. And if you're single, you definitely can't mingle. <laughs> not in my religion. <laughs> Number four. Did you both, how many fingers did you both? I put four and then I realized it's eight, so I'm gonna do two like that. Number four. <laughs> For Muslims and in Islam, engagements are kind of short. They don't have to be short, but they tend to be short because people don't really want to be in the limbo. Like Sofian said, if you ain't married, you're single. The engagement thing is like. Oh, yeah. 
that's a kind great of, area. It's kind of great. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like, mm. you tend to not want to be engaged too long because you want to be able to like, you know, touch your person and stuff. And you can't do that when you're engaged. It doesn't really change your boundaries. So there's no point in really being engaged too long. It's just that thing of we're really wanting to get married to each other. We're going to start doing the preparations. Nobody else is going to really approach us now because we've decided we want to Yeah, get once you're engaged, men can't really approach Amara at that point. I can't really approach women at that point. It's kind of like, okay, listen, these two are doing whatever they're doing. Stay away. <laughs> I'm betrothed. <laughs> Shall not pass. Some people will have long engagements, but that two year, three year, four year engagement, even one year engagement that you kind of will Love see that. in other cultures. Yeah. Not in my religion. <laughs> Number five, and I think this is our last point, there is something in Islam called the dowry, which is basically, she can take all my money. People like the sound of that. I don't know if that's like a thing in other cultures, but people like really like that about Islam. I didn't you like get. it. Really? Before, before marriage, I didn't like it. Why? The dowry or the mahr is an amount of money, well, it tends to be an amount of money that the bride can request from the husband <laughs> in order to secure the marriage. The secure the bag. It's like a deposit, but it's a deposit that you don't get back. <laughs> Amara, for instance, can ask me, in order to get married, can request ten thousand pounds and for me to state my intent in the marriage i have to pay ten thousand pounds to get married and it's not like oh well you're buying the marriage it's nothing like that it's stating your intent it's the rights of the woman it's a long story and we can get into it some other time but it is advised in islam the woman should ask something reasonable obviously from what the man can afford you do get cases so i know somebody who the family said oh well if you want to marry you gotta pay eighty thousand pounds now nothing goes like that it's not for the family to request the dowry it's for the wife to request it from the husband and that amount of money she can keep for herself, she can do whatever she wants with it. I can't touch it. All I want is your heart and your soul. <laughs> so it doesn't always have to be an amount of money. Yeah, there's like stories in the past where like men had come and didn't have gold or money or wealth to give the person that they wanted to marry. So they were allowed to, you know, recite a surah or, you know, do something like that, do an act of service for them. It doesn't have to be like money all the time. That's, nice. Soul. That's a nice point though. Yeah, it is. So there is a dowry. Okay, so those are the main differences between a Muslim marriage or a Muslim approaching marriage and a non-Muslim approaching marriage. We generally kind of did follow that and you can imagine why we didn't spend so much time together in certain kind of ways, why we'd never been on holiday before. You don't cook much. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't cook anyway, but why she's not tasted like some of my traditional food, I guess things like Jamaican food, Pakistani food, obviously we both share the Pakistani yeah. culture, but if you did see the clip of the old halal dating thing, we even like synced up our, yeah, we did. Synced up our conversation. <laughs> We tried our best to um, approach it in that way and that's why we don't have that many memories together. That sounds so sad. <laughs> yeah. Imagine being 20 years like, I just don't remember anything I like about this. <laughs> we have no memories. We are robots. <laughs> that's that basically. And now we're just going to talk about our story. Our love story. How we got from there to here. How we went from zero to a hundred. How we went from her mysterious love interest to a gentleman companion. <laughs> so you know how we met. Catch the video here. We met on Facebook, but it was better than that, okay? Somebody comments on the video, the most boring how we met story ever. Listen. When is love ever boring? Does love sound boring to you? Look into these <laughs> eyes. <laughs> So in terms of us meeting, that whole courting phase, I guess, we'd met each other on social media, shown some interest in each other. I just comment some voice notes. Yo, <laughs> I could be charming, you know. Stop doing the charm <laughs> video. Nearly <laughs> choked. That's karma. I was 29 when I was speaking to Amara, maybe 30 years old, I don't know. I'm 33 now. I moved out when I was 21, and then I'm living back with my family at this point. People have different backgrounds, so it was important to me to find the girl that I'm going to marry by myself. Not mum introducing me to her. Mum doesn't know what I like. This guy doesn't know what I like. Oh, bro, I know this girl that you like, but I don't like her then, yeah? Yeah, you're oppositional, guy. It's not oppositional, I'm very particular. Facebook. <laughs> Facebook can suggest <laughs> friends to me, but not real people can't suggest anyone to me. <laughs> Pretty early on, I told my mum that I was speaking to Mara. I don't remember her early, but I would have told my mum everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we kind of went from there. Yeah. Amara and myself have been brought up in two opposite situations. Not how we are now, but our upbringing. When we first got to know each other, I found it so strange the kind of stories and experiences he'd had. And I felt like, whoa, we have a six year age gap. A lot of the time I thought, oh, it's because of the age gap that we have such different experiences. But it's also because he's like a guy and I'm a girl. And I've grown up around girls. She's got no brothers. No. She didn't really have any male. Um... Went to a religious school and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I went to a boys' school. Not that religious. <laughs> I just remember no. when you left boys' school, you were like, women! <laughs> I wasn't like women. When I left the boys' school, I remember sitting down in college. I was a goody goody, innit? Like, yeah. I was a bit. Mm. 
tired. Well, I was doing some work. One girl come and sat on the table and another girl sat on the table. And I was like, okay. Over some time, I thought, oh, girls like me. They flocked to me like birds. No, I, was always, I, was, I always got along with guys. I didn't really know about women. Do you know what I mean? I just didn't know about women. Why are you holding your face so <laughs> I'm not. I didn't really know about I'm women. I'm very comfortable speaking about this. I didn't know about women. I didn't know. You're about right women. there. <laughs> Thank you for appreciating my husband. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> I guess we're going up, we go to college and you get towards that like later college, it's turned to uni. I was around a lot of relationships. I knew a lot of guys who were in relationships. I knew a lot of girls who were in relationships. Started speaking to people that you weren't really speaking to, like yeah. a different cohort of people, whereas you were just um, kind of accessing people from Islamic schools and things yeah. like that. I'm exposed to all of these different yeah. things. So getting a bit older, coming to about 25, 26, 27 years old, have been around a whole range of people. I've been around people that are really toxic, people that are violent. I've been around people that are passive aggressive, a variety of situations. And obviously because of things personal to me, which Amara knows about, maybe we'll speak about in another video. I'd figured out exactly who I am, how I function and what I want out of life. And was on like a path to empower myself and become like the best version of myself that I can be. Within that, I knew exactly what I wanted in a woman, so to speak. I guess I knew what, what would compliment me and what would help me. I just wanted to find who I'm going to marry by myself. And I did. When I met Sofiane, I was pretty like certain very early on that that was who I wanted to marry. <laughs> <laughs> Three weeks in I was like, this will be the father of my children right here. My checklist was very like intuitive, which I know is not great and it's not like the rational thing. Am I comfortable with this person? Do I find this person annoying? Do I find this person funny? Marrying somebody funny was like a big thing to me in it. I just wanted to marry somebody that made me laugh a lot. When I met Sofiane, I felt so comfortable around him. Like this person is just somebody that I would just talk to forever. Like I just want to talk to him and talk to him. Sofiane, he had like nothing annoying about him like he talked but he like listened and that sounds so lame see the checklist he needs to talk but he needs to listen as well like, he needs no. mouth and ears he talked about things that i was interested in and he thought about things that i was interested in the same like views on religion that i had he had these were like really big things to me we have a similar mentality yeah, yeah, yeah. and i don't have to feel like oh i'm thinking this thing and the person doesn't want to hear it because they're not into thinking yeah, about yeah. that thing you're very easy to talk to so i knew that i liked him and i felt like we have a lot of things that like deeply connect us but that doesn't determine if you're gonna marry somebody. I was very attracted to him. I thought he is a hottie. <laughs> like, really Mashallah. Like, she's a lot more beautiful than I am. I'm not bad looking. Not yeah, beautiful. but she's a lot more beautiful than I am. No. But uh, uh, let's not get too something. So within like three weeks, I was like, yeah, I want to marry this person probably. So like, I wanted to get married after three weeks, but I was pretty much like, I would be ready to like. No. Get this thing in the great area, if you know what I mean. <laughs> a little engagement. <laughs> I wasn't bothered about engagement proposals. I was just like, let's let's move towards getting to know each other. Let's let you know what I mean. I'm a bit impatient like that. Yeah, Anything yeah. that you need to tick off, let's get it ticked off because I know where I want this to go. Let's meet parents. Let's do all this and. Yeah. It actually took a year. We got married a year later, but obviously we really liked each How other. How long was it for you? For what? Let the people, that's what the people want to know. I can hear it. Three days? Three days. Four days? Uh, before I even spoke to him. Oh, wow. I could, I could taste living there. Oh my god. <laughs> We went out and met each other in a very public place the first time. We actually went to somewhere where a lot of elder people who know my family were actually present at the time. Spent some time together there. And then kind of after that point, we did see each other in um, numerous places. I remember we went out to food once and my sister came with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't really go on like swanky dates or anything. Yeah. That's a good gig for a sister, you get nice meals. <laughs> we made an effort to meet each other in places where there were lots of people. Yeah. Because in our religion, it says when a man and a female are alone, the third person in that situation is the shaitan in terms of like you know lust and putting thoughts in people's head yeah, yeah yeah it happens doesn't it it happens not too long after that we were at the stage where i met amara's family went to her house introduced myself i think i just popped in and said like hello salam i'm sophia you're so tall in my, my little house yeah i was i was still, yeah because everyone's so i was you're like very tall. in the corridor like okay <laughs> this is where the hobbits live i brought amara to meet my family as well and she came around and met everybody the way we spent time Time really was me going over to Amara's house and spending time with her in accordance with Islam. That's that's halal. Yeah. You know, I was meeting Amara in her family house with her family present. Amara had come to my house. I remember um, she cooked for my family once. We watched Get Out, which was kind of an early sound of what I should have done. Yeah, I just watched my face as any racism. Like my sister would sit in a room with us. To anybody who's not Muslim, that might seem a bit like, well, 
how you meant to get to know the person in our religion that's that's a level of intimacy that we're permitted to have you know it's not about squeezing and the first kiss it's not about all of that stuff it's about figuring out if this person has the kind of qualities that you desire in them and whether together you can make a relationship out of this moving forward but that's why it took me a year you know it took me a year to figure that out and to meet you in person and to get like a good feel of who you are and how you are in person see them you think oh they're nice they're kind of nice looking but then there's more than that there's like the aura you know how they speak how they react i needed a bit longer than she did <laughs> i think in islam what's a bit different is from what i've seen of non-muslim relationships the confidence in marrying that person comes from doing certain things with them first so you go on holiday with them you have your first like christmas together you know you go through these experiences and build these memories and if all these things go well you feel like oh i really want to marry that person i feel like we'd be okay and in islam it's different you're making a very educated kind of guess in islam you're not trying to build these deep memories you're not trying to make this deep connection and physical bonds and stuff that are going to be very painful when you end them it's not just the pain of oh if it's not right then it'll hurt there's kind of sin in doing those things so you're yeah, only yeah. bringing yourself less blessings in what you're doing mm -hmm. the blessings come from keeping your boundaries and getting to know each other in very safe ways when you get married as a muslim yeah you could be engaged for five years and try and get to know them as much possible but really you don't really know somebody until you live with them and stuff and I think in some non-muslim cultures they live with each other first before they get married yeah, to experience I, I all that I don't want to marry them if I don't know yeah. what they're going to be like but in Islam that's not really an option it's not that I would have married him after three weeks but after three weeks I was like I'm pretty sure that this is a person that I would like take the steps forward with now that comes from the fact that I didn't expect to be able to live with him or go on trips with him and stuff I already knew the, the level to which I would yeah, yeah, have yeah. to understand okay. somebody yeah, yeah, I, I think in my head is I need to make an educated guess before I get married on so the person's qualities you know understand there's not too much more to know than that you know what i mean so in terms of romance my favorite film when i was a kid was romeo and juliet <laughs> yeah, was. yeah i was fascinated by romance and love and spoiling people and roses everywhere and your know, things like that that concept was for me what I want. I want to find a woman and I want to give it the world, basically. Mine was Kill Bill. I don't know what that says. <laughs> that you got some childhood trauma. <laughs> Especially when you're comparing it to Western standards, yeah? So we grow up watching the movies and what do you do when you meet a girl? Tell her you like her. You Tuck her hair behind her ear. In high school, you go to a prom. I'm not hating anybody, but for me, prom was not an option. I went to boys' school. That's good. You take them out for a date and then you do the flowers. You do the romance, you know? You set up a scene, you take them back somewhere. You candle at dinners and whining and dining. Pulling out all of the stops that you would to show somebody that you really care yeah. about them and you, you want to create this romance obviously in islam in our religion that's not an option those kind of things are left for after marriage so i'm a guy that was never in a situation where i was like oh do you know what i'm about to get married here she's the one no matter who will tell you what <laughs> in my head i've always wanted to get married and i was like i can't really see the options i can't see the person do you know exist so when it came to a person and i was like i actually feel like i could marry this person my instinctive reaction was okay well I need to show her that I want to marry her. And I've got all of these things and all these things like stored inside me. Yeah. I'm going to pull out this, 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 yeah. this, and this. And I couldn't do any of those things. So I guess one of the challenges was trying to be romantic and halal. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? All of my reference points of, okay, well, how do you be romantic? They're not halal. I can do whatever I want with my wife. But at that point, when you're trying to woo someone, I was like, how can I woo more than words? And I'm very closed up as well. So we're having like all these conversations. I'm not being too emotional. I'm being a bit rational, innit? I'm like, how can I woo? How can I woo? How can I woo? I'm like, tell me about your feelings. And he's like, well, uh, there are categories to my feelings. <laughs> so there was one opportunity that I had to be romantic and it was Amara's birthday. I thought, okay, well, at least I have to do something for her birthday. Valentine's had gone by and there's no Valentine's. Valentine's went by and I was like, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Muslims don't really celebrate that anyway, but you know the whole rest of the world's doing Valentine's Day. I was like, maybe I'll write your card or something. Hi, <laughs> like you. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up for the birthday. I didn't expect anything. And I went and bought some big flowers. I bought a teddy bear, a big balloon as well. There's a big yeah, balloon. He had some kisses on the balloon and said something romantic or something like that. I kept those balloons in my room so long. They went deflated and disgusting and I kept them so long because every, every morning I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh, he's real. Honestly, well, like <laughs> I had no option but to go to her mum's house. It took a bit of confidence. Like I had to think, okay, I'm going to do it. So I came and uh, knocked on the door and I had flowers in one hand and a balloon in the other and the bear here. I rang the doorbell. The door opened and I was just like, <laughs> Islam. I was like, what, what can I do in it? It's a birthday. It I was, think my sister opened the door as well. I know, it was it was super awkward, <laughs> but it was the only way that I could show her, like, give her some romance prior to marriage. I have never been romance in my life, ever. Nobody can say that. Never had boys, never had boys. <laughs> never been romance, never had flowers, never had any gifts like that, ever. So then my sister's like, oh, um, Sufyan's at the door. And I was like, okay, just, you know, let him in. Then I come downstairs and he's walking up the drive. He's walking up the drive and he's like this. And he's shy and he's like oh, holding sure. the balloons and he's holding flowers. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? What's going on here? I don't know what this is. Oh my god, they're 
Freddie's letter for you. I was like, what? What was nice about it was that her mum and her sisters got to see that I was yeah they were romantic. they were so touched. And now we can be romantic like in private and I can do other things, but it was a good thing to show yeah. the statement that look I'm I'm serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm I'm serious about this in that way anyway. It was a bit cringe, but it was it was worth it. Sophia was a very low key guy and I was very like love eyed and like really excited. And Sophia was very like would not talk too much about anything. Like would not talk too much about what he wanted or his feelings in terms of us. He was very like reserved and when I'd like want to ask him questions I'd be like what do you think about this tell me about this he'd be like that's stuff that I would like talk to my wife about and I was like damn that's insulting we're like on the road to getting married and he's like it's not really things he said after marriage I would talk about these things in it with my wife he never said with you he said with my wife I would talk about these things <laughs> my wife my wife would get this and I was just that's like so bro it was so deep. why don't you say my name at least so I know that it's me you never know. I didn't know it was me till blooming wedding day he showed me and he was very like you know there so i was like okay so basically we arranged the meeting of both of our families and we got engaged i arranged to go and see amara's parents and asked if i could have a daughter's hand in marriage they both said yes as of that point after the families met we were kind of engaged the thing that was difficult was obviously growing up being romeo and juliet and stuff i had this vision in my head yeah of getting engaged now i'm gonna get down on one knee and i'm gonna brook it down in a certain kind of way and it's gonna be nice yeah i'm gonna put my raspy voice on i might even sing do the works basically if you're thinking like how it went now her family met my family i went and asked for our hands in marriage we've been speaking for a year we know that we're about to get married so it didn't really make sense to go and then propose do you know what I mean? Yeah. In your head, the proposing is a surprise. Will you marry me? She's like, oh yes, I'll marry you. Oh my gosh, it's so, do you know what I mean? If I turn up with a ring and drop down on one knee, it'd be like, oh, that's a nice ring. <laughs> yes, okay, do you know what I mean? So we'd be doing it just for the sake of ticking the thing. So yeah. we never did that. I remember you were a bit deviled about that. I was a bit bummed about that. Yeah. Now I don't care. Save some money, really. <laughs> and I got dodgy knee anyway after all my football days. <laughs> I guess we're fighting between, okay, well this is how love is meant to look, which is like a totally Western concept yeah. from television vision and yeah. songs and stuff like that yeah in your head that's what love is yeah. and then when you do love and it doesn't go like that you feel like oh well i didn't i didn't hit that nope probably yeah. i didn't i didn't hit that mark in it and now amara can watch like somebody getting proposed to on television it's not happening and she'd be like oh that's so romantic and i'm yeah. like but i would have done that though and i never did because it wasn't fitting it didn't fit into our religion it didn't fit into our process i'm sure people still do like propose and get engaged and stuff like that in that kind of way just for the sake of doing it fancy so the woman has got it yeah. but it didn't make sense do you know yeah. what i mean i feel bad for sophia because i feel like it's something he craved to do but i never craved to receive that i craved mm. to get married i thought about that a lot i thought i'm gonna do such a small wedding i don't even care about that <laughs> diary what's diary I don't care and ask him to recite a piece of Quran. Then in the end I got ring. You know, I didn't care about that bit at all. I wanted to skip to the marriage bit because proposal bit didn't yeah, yeah, mean yeah. too much to me. Mm -hmm. But I know that you love romance, you love being able That's to do all that. I just wanted to be that guy. And you sang on our wedding day. That didn't go well. <laughs> so yeah, we got married. Yeah. Yes. So we were engaged for engaged, if you want to call it. From when the families met, we were married within two months. So something like that. A very short period of time we were married. And it just meant basically we were getting on with wedding preparations, that's all it really meant. This apartment that we're in now, we'd set it up. Yeah, we'd set this apartment, we'd bought it. Amara would go down with her sisters and she'd do the cleaning and then I'd come around with my brother and we'd move some stuff and it was that's kinda how it went. We had the wedding. I was like holding Amara's hand in front of people. I gave her mum a hug. I'd never hugged a mum before because until that point, if you watch our earlier video about relationships and that, I wasn't halal for Amara's mum to hug at that point. Everything changed and I was like hugging Amara and in front of people and it was and it was good and it was nice and Amara looked amazing and I looked amazing. I've been going gym for about three months, four months straight, yeah. And I was shredded to bits and Amara had been doing bits and everything like that. When it was actually the best day of my life and was also the worst day of my life in some places as well. <laughs> but it was beautiful, it was beautiful. I'd rented a nice car, it's like a, a brand new BMW or something. Drove back to the apartment here, got out the car, struggled to lock it. <laughs> <laughs> it was too fancy. It was like us. a severe, we didn't know that what was we were doing. <laughs> we walked up to the apartment, took off my blazer, took off my shoes. Amara like put her bag down. We had a little cuddle, had a little smooch, and then we were like, whoa, okay. This is this is this is weird. Super weird. We were just alone. The house was quiet. We'd never been alone in a house before. Obviously, it's a wedding night. It was just something that was a very strange situation. Super weird. Isn't yeah. It? It's halal for me to kiss her. It's halal for me to touch her. It's halal for us to have like relationships with each other and stuff like that. It's all halal, but it was just so foreign. We're about to really get to know each other now. Yeah. <laughs> for better or worse. We'd gone from a situation where we don't spend any time together yeah. to sharing a bed together. I wake up in the morning and Amara's next to me and it's beautiful and it's all 
that we've got had. my hair and everything. Yes, yeah. walking around in the kind of clothes that you'd expect people to walk around in the house. Yeah, I was shredded, so I was just in boxes all day long. <laughs> <laughs> it was like playing house, wasn't it? Oh, we're married. Okay, we'll have some <laughs> coffee in. So you're stepping into a whole new part of your life. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You've gone from being like very like politey and stuff to like now we're husband and wife, which means you're meant to like. <laughs> Bear, bear yourself to each other, you know what I mean? So like, you feel like you're playing house a bit, like I don't know how to act like a wife. You just to... step into this role instantly. Yeah, I've not even been like a fiance to you or a girlfriend really, like what yeah. is a wife? So then you step into this thing and you're thinking, I'm just the girl that's been alone in her bedroom. <laughs> like you're playing the part of, okay, I think this is what a wife does and I think I'd do this and you know what I mean? I just enjoyed trying to be cute in front of him really. <laughs> that was it at first. I didn't think about it. It's like a blur of emotions and you don't think about it too much and we had our honeymoon really quickly after yeah, yeah. the wedding night we stayed here the night after that amara actually went to her mum's house i stayed at my mum's house we hadn't moved out of our actual houses properly so we needed to pack because the day after that three in the morning we left to go on honeymoon and we went to morocco and stayed there for like the best part of a week and that was like fully immersive exposure. We are together in a different country. We're in this villa, it's beautiful. There's a swimming pool, as lavish as you could have it. And it was beautiful, it was a beautiful place. But as Mara would tell you- I yeah, cried a lot. Yeah, there were some difficulties. Yeah. So the honeymoon was like a, a whole adjustment experience and Sophia and I had completely different experiences of that honeymoon, which will be like for another video because that's too long right now. I remember after being married, I felt really shaken by the fact that I was no longer a virgin. I found that so difficult to accept because it'd been a part of me for so long and a part that I really, really held on to. And it was so strange. I'd known this person for like a year and suddenly <laughs> I've like, given them my virginity like that felt so weird which feels so it sounds strange doesn't it yeah, not that felt like who are you <laughs> i felt like you don't deserve it i've only known you a year like I'm playing you yeah <laughs> but we're like married <laughs> i'm feeling like how dare you you know take that from me and i remember i cried a lot and i felt like i couldn't talk to him about it because i felt like he would think i was silly or something he asked me like what's wrong you know because i wouldn't come out the bathroom he's like just tell him what's wrong and i told him about it and he just cuddled me and he was like oh it's okay babe it's okay and he gave me a cuddle and he's like I completely understand that you know what i mean and i thought oh that's really nice and that helped you know that helped me feel better the fact that you were so like receptive and understand because i never imagined you to understand because i didn't understand it you know i didn't understand how i could feel like that this isn't like okay well once and no it lasted and a long crying. time this is like a process so it's not like oh whatever happened and then amaro ran away and cried i just noticed over some time that she was sad i remember asking you you were like um well this is what's wrong yeah with me yeah I was, I was fine with that totally understand that what's not to understand about that you know it was something that i didn't even realize i never thought about that part as you're getting older as a woman you crave certain things and i craved to be like close with sofia and i craved all that stuff so i never thought it would be a problem for me i was like 25 26 so i thought i'm like gonna be ready for that i'm mid-20s i'm really excited and everything and it took me like a few months to process it but i just felt like a part of me was gone i felt like i was like playing house and being like all right and i was on cloud nine i was like really excited and everything and then there was the other side of me that was like oh my god who you were is gone and I um, I watched Jane the Virgin. <laughs> I watched Jane the Virgin because it had the words in the show and I thought maybe I'll resonate with something there. And it made me feel so much better. Why? Because she's Because she was she's she was a virgin and she was like <laughs> older. No, but she was older and she was a virgin and in the episode that she lost her virginity, she was like crying and stuff and I was like, Oh my god, other people feel like this. It's not something that people I'd ever heard talk about. My mum didn't even warn me, like I thought my mum would warn me of all things that I would feel. <laughs> Nobody told me that. So yeah, I'd never expected to feel that way. And nobody ever told me that that's a thing that you could feel. But I felt very, like, very sad about, you know, that part of me being gone. Which sounds so silly now because it's not like that, you know what I mean? No, it's, not, something, it something. it's not like a thing that you hold on for the rest of your life though, you know what I mean? It's, it's a natural progression of your relationship. But it just felt, going from zero with Sofia to 100, yeah. like that, in a short space of time, just felt a bit like, whoa. It was noticeable. It was noticeable. And I guess you can imagine somebody in that situation being like, oh, well, you're my wife and this happens and you're crying am i not good enough how do you think i feel it's just a little message to all men in general a lot of times when men are marrying muslim women the women will be virgins i know that's difficult in this day and age but it will happen um, a lot of the time a lot of men will be virgins also but i think a woman's virginity is totally different yes. to a man's virginity women and men are totally different so men if you do find yourself in a situation where you have married a virgin alhamdulillah be very considerate very delicate 
delicate, very understanding. Well, let's put it this way. Amara is from the West over here. Yeah, now we're not all from the West. Amara knows what sex is, television. And yeah, things. yeah, I grew up watching like sex and state and stuff, especially because it's something that I had no concept of. That's yeah. what I watched to yeah. understand what it was, you know, to try and see how to feel. It's got the word sex. <laughs> City sex. Jean, the virgin. Yeah. Sex. Very, very literal, yeah. Amara knows what sex is. And I was looking forward to it. I yeah. don't know why I was upset. <laughs> and even though she knows what it is and she knows that's an expectation and she's looking forward to it and you know she knows this goes like this she was still i won't say traumatized but she was still severely affected by yeah. it she had a massive emotional reaction to it obviously being the person i am i was able to be awake to that situation yeah. and try to give you the time you needed to heal and be as competent as i could with you amara is the most perfect wife in the world other women will have similar situations to amara some women will have totally different situations in the fact that they don't know anything about sex they didn't go watching sex in the city or they weren't really looking forward to it, it was just something an expectation that they knew will have to come when they are married so I just think it's important for guys getting married to be delicate and um, just a message for all the women getting married obviously you should be communicating with your husband prior to the marriage without going too R-rated and stuff like that me and Amara were able to have some kind of conversations to speak about what our expectations were of each other and to find out if we are compatible with each other verbally so to speak I'm not talking about sending nudes and sexy sexy talk sexy sexy talk sexy sexy talk so uh, <laughs> you know what I'm married you speak slower yeah. obviously you can have conversations prior to marriage and your husband will probably know that you're a virgin going into marriage and maybe there's things that you haven't spoken about but there is no obligation to have sex with your husband on the first night that's just like not a thing you're talking about a woman that's come from a situation where she's a virgin and in different countries and different situations things are different but some people end up in a marriage where they're not really ready to have sex right now yeah. they want some familiarity with the yeah person yeah first. and that's totally normal that's yeah. totally normal you have to respect the woman that's your wife it's not an object for you to like empty your body with you know yeah. what i mean or to just like satiate yourself with like that for it to go well as well you need a certain kind of yeah. comfort with the person even like physiologically for it to go well you need to like feel Feel comfortable Definitely. for your mind to feel comfortable for your body to yeah. feel comfortable. and what a bad start to a marriage if you didn't want to have sex with me at that point because you're uncomfortable but yeah. you feel like you should and i'm like okay no we're married now come on yeah what a, what a horrible start to marriage that loving moment and first time can turn into something traumatic which affects your marriage negatively for the rest of your marriage you know guys and girls uh, brothers and sisters if you are in similar situations or if that like resonates with you on any level men be a little more gentle and a little more open and kind and receptive to the women women know that there is no obligation for you to do that on the first night you know speak and be open with the people that you're with you, you know what's bad <laughs> <laughs> you know what's bad i never told you this but like for a year before i got married i listened to this podcast and it was the three letter word of SEX and it was like just about that you know it was just every episode taught you something new about it so I thought I should equip myself even before Sofiane I thought for whoever I marry I've not got experience so let me equip myself with all the knowledge so I listen to a podcast every day I learned so much from the episodes at the time I was like yes yes I know what this is I know what that is I don't remember any of that there was nothing was useful at all you know when you're married to somebody you've got to like get to know them in it like all this advice I watched Sex and Say I watched it a lot of times as well just for the education I listened to a podcast I read the articles none of that help anything i just that's cried right. like a baby after i don't fit into boxes that's why <laughs> can't define me you think a program can define me <laughs> nothing prepared me <laughs> So I thought that I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm so sick, I'm gonna be the sickest wife, I'm gonna be so prepared. I just cried. I think that's a beautiful thing, that it was such yeah. an important thing to you, an integral part of your yeah, it was. person. And you never know how you're gonna react to a situation until yeah. you're in a situation. People say, oh, if that happened, then I'd do this, and if this happened, then I'd do that. Yeah. It's you, exactly that. I've learned from experience, you never ever know how you're going to react to a situation until you're in a situation. You can yeah. talk all the talk, but you gotta stand up sometimes and just wait until you you're in that situation and then once you've been through it then you can judge yourself on that situation there's still no guarantee that you're like that the next time you're in a situation sometimes you just cry in the bathroom and then come out and get a cuddle sometimes yeah. that's, that's how it goes that's okay that was my marriage <laughs> <laughs> the first six months it was great i loved it so a lot of people might have a different viewpoint or a different approach to marriage but this is how we approach marriage in islam there will be people who do slightly tweaked versions of it but generically as a generic rule this is how you approach marriage so that was us just talking about basically our dating period our intimacy and going into marriage and everything but she's not scared anymore <laughs> yeah i'm not i'm a gentleman lover I'm halal i get reward for everything i yeah, do yeah that's cool yeah that's cool for everything i do if you like this video please give it a like if you want to see more videos like this and a bunch of other things that we make please hit subscribe and we'll see you next time inshallah every week 
Yeah. Make sure you leave some comments for us and let us know what you think of the video, if we covered any topics that interested you, anything you'd like us to discuss further, maybe your experience or your take on relationships, intimacy. Do you think Islam does it the right way? Do you think it does it the wrong way? Really hope you enjoyed the video. Remember guys, if you ain't married, you're single. Unless you're engaged and you're in the grey area. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm talking to Muslims obviously, not Muslims. <laughs> it's been really nice. My name is Sofian. My name is Amal. We are the exes and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.